Are we live now? Yes, we're live. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Welcome to another episode of VCTV by La Token. Today, Wednesday, January 13, we have an amazing topic to discuss. And, and also we have an amazing group of people, leaders and investors who are going to be discussing their um, experience, their advice, and most importantly, the content that is directed for you, startups, uh, small medium enterprises, and founders who need this information. So stay tuned until the end, pay attention, because today we're gonna have an amazing topic, which is about seed, invest seed investment and uh, early investment. So everyone uh, tuning in, welcome from all over the world. Everyone, good afternoon, good evening, good morning from wherever you are. And uh, because of the time, I just wanna go briefly on taking turns with uh, the panelists today, introducing yourself, the company you represent and how you can help startups today. Let's start uh, with Devan, please. Devan, hello, welcome. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I am Devang Mehta, partner at Antil Ventures. We're a speed scaling ecosystem. We invest in scale early stage companies in three verticals, of which I take care of the health tech vertical. So we invest in companies uh, in oncology and adjacencies. Uh, now, startups doing cool thing in AI, ML, and uh, cutting and cutting edge tech to improve uh, efficiencies in uh, procedures and cancer discovery. I am based out of Mumbai, India, and uh, you know, happy to connect with all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Devan, and welcome once again. Uh, let's move on to Anil. Hello, Anil. Welcome. Good to see you. Okay, thanks, Carol, and wish everyone very happy New Year. Uh, this is my first in 2021. Uh, I am Anil from Unicorn India Ventures, uh, based out of India. Uh, we are early stage VC and we focus investing half mil to two mil in tech focused ventures. So we stay away from e-commerce consumer internet. Uh, that's what uh, look forward to stay in touch and keep investing. Thank you. Thank you, Anil. Thank you so much. Uh, and welcome again. Happy New Year to you too. Gary, welcome from the US. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good to be here. So my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur, an investor. In fact, yesterday I made an investment in some uh, deep space tech. Uh, uh, I started the first accelerator in Russia and the number one private corporate accelerator out of Russia, GVA. So I've done 17 companies, two unicorns, and I just love artificial intelligence. So it's great to be here today. Thank you so much and welcome. From the US as well, Raghu, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, thank you, Carol and VCTV. I'm Raghu Rao from Princeton, New Jersey. I'm a serial entrepreneur, angel investor, and uh, business mentor. Uh, I have a company called Harvesting Enterprises. We uh, help with, uh, you know, from strategy stage to execution to exit. And uh, happy to be here. Look forward to uh, a good discussion. Thank you so much, Raghu. Thank you. Welcome and Happy New Year, too. Um, we have also Kweku for the very first time on La Token VC TV. It's, it's really good to have you. Welcome on board. And uh, please introduce yourself and let us know more about the company you represent. You're on mute. Zoom mistake. Uh, hey, hello, everybody. My name is Kweku Asian. Uh, uh, I represent, uh, I'm a partner for Mansa Capital. Uh, I am based here in Accra, Ghana, uh, but I've lived in Toronto for a while as well. My partner is Guinean, uh, but is, is based in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm an investor as well, invested in uh, uh, numerous uh, companies in, in North America, and, but now mostly in, in, in Africa, uh, including a blockchain prop tech company called Seso Global. And uh, my firm is an advisory firm as well. So we help startups here in Africa with strategy and as well as uh, with their capital raise. Uh, again, pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Kweku, and welcome again. 
I hope you have a really good session today. It's going to be very interesting for all of us. Welcome. So moving on, we have um, Harsh. Welcome back. Good to see you. Hey, Carol. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's been a pleasure coming back to uh, VCT again and again. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Harsh. Uh, the other I'm from uh, India. Uh, I'm representing AHA Ventures. Uh, I've been a serial entrepreneur myself. Uh, I've been uh, heading the investor relations and uh, strategic alliance for AHA Ventures uh, in the past two months. Uh, <clears throat> AHA Ventures is one of India's largest fundraising platform for startups. Uh, we've done uh, close to 63 deals in the past eight years, uh, out of which only five have not seen the light of day. Uh, most all of them are doing quite well. Uh, we also co-invest with our, a bunch of investors. We have done about 13 uh, co-investing so far, out of which nine we have had successful exits. Uh, we are agnostic in terms of the level uh, at what startup is or probably what uh, range of uh, funding they're looking at. We have we are looking at a you know uh, a portfolio of doing at least uh, 40 deals this year. So Jan has been quite interesting for us and uh, hope to see, uh, get connected with more people like this on the platform. Thank you so much. Hi Harsh, thank you so much for that introduction and welcome again. Uh, then we have uh, Francis from the Philippines. Is that correct, Francis? That's right, Carl. So hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm Francis. I'm an angel investor here in the Philippines, uh, as well as I'm in the uh, M&A space where we also help startups in uh, you know, structuring, advice, and, and uh, fundraising, uh, as well as uh, you know, I've been helping mentor startups uh, in the country to, to really get them global, if not regional, uh, within the Southeast Asian space. Yep, to be Hi, here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Francis, and welcome back. Good to see you. Happy New Year for you, too. Thank you. Uh, Srikant. Hi there. Uh, I believe this is the first show that I'm seeing with Carol hosting the show. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, I know quite a few in the panel who are uh, speaking. Some of you would have, would have spoken to me as well. I am Dr. Srikant Patsarki. I'm a... I'm a MLA advisor and uh, infinitely happen to be a law advisor as well. Pleasure to talk Fantastic. to you. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome again. So thank you so much for all of our amazing investors, advisors, and uh, leaders in their different industries. So today it's going to be a really important uh, session. And that is because uh, for all of you, dear panelists, I just want to share a little bit. So on, by day, on daily basis, um, we are um, helping or our mission as Latok and VCTV is to create this content, this educational content for startups, founders, and uh, small medium enterprises who are in this big journey in this challenging journey that is um, building a um, healthy startup and eventually, hopefully, a unicorn. Therefore, all of your advices today are pretty much dedicated to all of them who are watching us and who are connecting um, backstage to us and asking questions, how to pitch, um, am I suitable to pitch, I am um, in the right stage, and so on. So that is the content that we're gonna to discuss today. And please um, share your case studies, your advices, and uh, straight to the startups who are watching us today. So I, I would like to start with the first question, and uh, which is, what is precisely the seed investment and when, um, when it happens? So. Let's, let's, again, let's try to be concrete and short on that. Everybody um, share your um, opinions from your perspective as well. So again, what is seed investment and when it happens? Um, can we start with the bump, please, with this um, question? Yeah, uh, you know, that de definition changes a lot across geography, across even within a geography, across a sector and all. It's usually the first investment that comes in outside of friends and family, you know, so it's basically, you know, you start a company, you bootstrap it, you put your savings into it, and then people immediately around you, who frankly, in many cases, might not know that much about the company, but just know you put in money. And then, you know, you move along to the next round of funding, which is basically from contacts who are at least one level abstracted away from immediate friends and family. 
it could be an angel it could be a clutch of angels it could be even a pre series uh, institutional round uh, the time at it come when it comes in which is post uh, friends and family uh, usually uh, to round out a poc uh, or a beta version of a product and just get to market that broadly is a seed investment Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. That's very insightful. Thank you, Devan. So uh, moving on to Anil, um, following uh, what Devan just mentioned. So as a startup in the stage of uh, building, uh, building the project, not yet in the market, can they apply for um, pitching to for seed investment? I think there are several examples where you know companies have raised money uh, even you know when they are at you know uh, tissue paper plant stage right so and they have done good i still remember the first company which we had invested you know during mumbai angel days which is a leading angel platform in india which i had it for some time and uh, the company which we invested was called m coach and that discussion actually happened over a coffee table and uh, now it is called in mobi and and you know uh, it's in a first unicorn in india right so yes uh, investment does happen you know even at idea stage uh, or at a prototype stage uh, however you know for that to happen either you need very close association with mentor investor or your pitch has to be you know so unique that investors you know can't afford to miss right so answer is yes it does happen but it's not a normal phenomena from a vc perspective to write you know check it in an idea stage or or you know at a plan stage but yes investment does happen in fact so those those sounds like really good news for a startup why in that, that stage in, uh, raised uh, you know uh, his first you know investment which is uh, 30 million dollars uh, and that was raised even before their company was incorporated so yes uh, it depends upon who's doing and you know what is the idea uh, but yes it does happen they can certainly pitch but they have to be unique right thank, thank you. you thank you for that um gary what are the chances um uh, based on what anil mentioned it has to be unique it depends on uh, the project and uh, um all of the elements how do you see what are the real chances for a startup that is building their project not yet in the market actually succeed in uh, finding an investor well uh, it's harder to do when you don't have revenue right so There's really three levels of startup. 1.0 is you're going to your design thinking, thinking you you uh, get your MVP. Two is regional dominance, and three is going global. So in that first stage, so the critical steps in the first stage is one: do you have the right kind of team, and can you build something? Uh, in the first stage of it, in a seed investment, it's really based on faith. Do you believe in the team? Do you think they can pull it off? have they done it before if those are the, if that's the case the probability dramatically increases you're going to get funded and if they're serial entrepreneurs and they've done it three or four times it's not as hard so uh, it it never is easy one of the best ways to do it is use an accelerator traditional accelerator like a y combinator a plug and play to get some funding and some guidance to be able to get you through the process so it is uh, you know going down and doing customer discovery and validation to make sure you got the right product the right place the right time and people want to buy it the book by uh, Steve Blank and Bob Dorf uh their um Bob was my dean of my school and Steve's a friend from Silicon Valley I would use that guidance to help you make sure that you're building something that people want All right. Awesome. Thank you. That is actually very insightful and I really hope that startups who are watching us are taking notes on that because this is very valuable. Um Raghu, what is the difference between seed investment and startup funding? Can you guide us on that please? Uh sure. I think the uh, as they say friends family uh, some people say fools. <laughs> so it's about uh 
the before uh, you go to seed investment is usually outside of uh, your immediate circle, as Devang was mentioning. This is more of your friends, family, and yourself uh, starting up where you you know start the company and you uh, you have the concept and you set up the company, you get the right team, and you may not have uh, the idea. One person may have the idea. You still need to get a well-rounded team. And I think as many people alluded, including Gary, the team is extremely important, I think, at this the startup stage. And once you have the, I mean, the, if it is a serial entrepreneur, of course, people already have gone through what is needed to take it through the you know, rest of the steps. So that has a lot more credibility, so. Okay. Thank you so much. So um, it's very insightful to what you're saying. And I would like to ask Kweko in terms of your experience. Um, I bet you have also startups uh, coming to you and knocking at your door, um, intending to present or pitching to you. So the question is, uh, um, again, talking about um, early stage, what are the basics that you look in um, in the startup, in the project, to filter into a possibility versus no chance at all. So what are those basics that you will um, share with us? Sure, and I'll say this in the, in the context of the, the content, at least for me, so there are three main things that I, I at least with respect to Cecil, let me use that example that I looked out for. So first is always the, the founder, it's, it's always down to the founder. You know, having those conversations with that individual, asking them questions, just uh, sort of vibing with them and understanding, you know, where their mind is at, whether or not they have sort of those qualities that are required for, for a CEO, you know, perseverance and the, the sort of the need to learn and then sort of the, the, uh, the need to adapt as well. And obviously, the, simply enough, just the, 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 the problem statement, you know, is this really going to solve something as well, especially in the context of... of of, of Africa, really, you really want to ask yourself, is this going to solve something? Uh, 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 and, and is this so, so solution going to solve that? And uh, I guess the, the final part is for me, at least personally, is, is to see if I can be of help. Uh, and so if I personally sort of my money is, is smart money as well. And so if I can move that, that sort of uh, uh, startup along the journey as well with my own network, my own connections, then it makes it an easier sort of, I guess, selling for me uh, to, put, to put in some capital. All right, that is um, straightforward, very helpful. Thank you, Kweku. Uh, and I would like to um, use the same question to Harsh. So again, you're also from your perspective of investor, what are those basics that you see in startups in early stages when they come to you to pitch? What are those basics that they must have to, to, like I said again, to move to a possibility of investment? Um, so Carol, uh, you know, while it's, it's quite interesting and a positive sign that Indian ecosystem of startup is really good, doing well, you know, we've, uh, you know, got uh, as giant as trip cuts uh, coming to India when my dual mine was a very big thing for India to raise funds for a startup, right? Uh, but then because of that, a uh, lot of founders really thought uh, the way of doing business is by raising funds, right? So that was like a bad perception which led, led, a, led a lot of founders to lead that route. Uh, what founders also don't understand that fundraising is a full-time activity, right? You really need to spend a lot of time in figuring out what investors you need to re reach out to, what uh, things you need to talk in detail, what things you need to restrict. It's a strategy by itself, right? So it, it takes a lot of time and toll uh, to get rejections also. So what ideally actually we look for, uh, you know, especially me personally, is their dedication, the team especially, the de team's dedication and strategy to build more revenues. I mean, if you've not figured out how you're going to make money, uh, there's no point for asking money, the way I look at it that way. Because uh, in the past, I've seen so many guys who rely only on funding to run their company. It doesn't have to work, right? So, I mean, you might just get your seed, you might get your friends and family, or uh, even Raghu said, some fools on board. But to run a company, you're going to need customers, right? So that's your main source of funding. I'm not going to be your main source of funding. The main strategy to make money, to acquire more customers, reaching to 100 customers, 1,000 customers, 100 markets is what I'm more interested in. So that's what we really focus time on. So while obviously the first uh, you know, level of uh, filtration is founders, but immediately I jump on and understand what are they going to do with the product and how they're going to make money, the revenue plan. 
Mm -hmm. All right, very insightful. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to move to uh, Sri Srikanth in terms of like, what are the opposite? What are the no-goes that you may face as an investor um, or even as an advisor? What are those no-goes that startups keep um, common uh, mistakes that they keep coming on and on? And that's because they are, again, they are in the early stage. They are probably pitching for the very first time or second time. They don't have that experience. What are those no-goes? that um, they have to avoid? See, uh, I think the fundamentals did not change, uh, does not really change post-COVID. I think startups make a very, very fundamental mistake of saying that they pivoted during COVID and here's my fresh set of ideas, which uh, is going to make me a billion dollar company as opposed to the billion dollar company that I was. I think the, the fundamental hubris that startups come with, uh, especially solving problems of COVID is one of the most uh, overheard uh, scenario that I would, I, would, uh, I would double down with Harsh in this particular factor, right? Uh, and number two is, I would say a complete no-go would be the dichotomy of choosing. And in India, especially in India, we have this dichotomy of edtech or hyperlocal, which seem to be the, the, the tangential approaches that uh, startups seem to be taking to just get funded and to just get the valuation, which is, which is not the right, uh, right way of approaching an investor. There are other avenues, there are other uh, uh, ecosystems. For example, Kochi is one ecosystem which I've always appreciated as a, as a hub, which is very strong on fundamentals. Israel is another hub which I have always appreciated as a, as a hub which is great on fundamentals. The fundamentals do not change. If, if startups expect the COVID to have to have changed the fundamentals, they, I think they need to reassess themselves. Very, very insightful. Thank you so much for the startups who are watching us. You know now what not to do. Otherwise, um, your investment gets in risk right now. So thank you so much. Uh, moving on to Francis, in terms of um, similar question to you, when startups come to you in, in the early stage, what are the no-goes? There is no way that um, they have higher chances. So the same, can you name two to three no-goes that you recommend um, early stage startups not to bring up to an investor? Sure, I think uh, one of the key things uh, is the cap table. Uh, I love looking at the cap table. It usually you know, shows us the story of what really happened uh, before they got together. Uh, and also shows who's meeting and, and you know, who are the passing ones as well. Uh, on the other hand, it also uh, is all about the, uh, the, the product uh, because we always want to validate that with uh, customers around, uh, especially if it's a local targeted uh, startup. So we always check on the customers, uh, making sure that uh, they actually want something like this. Uh, and, and lastly, it's also about uh, you know, who, who the founders are uh, and why they're doing it. So I think it's, it's very critical for us to know that uh, during tough times, you know, these guys are not going to give up and, and they're going to you know, push on whatever happens. That is uh, very useful. Thank you so much, Francis. So it sounds to me that um, more than one investor agrees that the first thing to, um, to influence or not in investing is the CEO. So what are, again, what are the characteristics or what do you look into the CEO to finally decide to invest or not. Let's go very quickly on this. And uh, I would like to start with Anil. What are, um, what are those things that you watch or you look into um, in the CEO or the founder? So it's a very tough one. Uh, we are an early stage, you know, investor. And the only thing from our perspective is, you know, the quality of team and more important, you know, CEO, right, or founding team, right, founders and co-founders. So we, in fact, you know, uh, take too much time in validating this one point, you know, about founders and their team, right? So when you talk about qualities, what we do, look at, I think the list is quite, you know, long and it's a laundry list, but to highlight, you know, some of the aspects which actually, you know, um, make important for, for us is, you know, what's their background, 
you know what kind of institutes they come from uh, you know what is their qualification what kind of family background they have uh, you know how passionate they about you know their venture what made them start you know this venture what kind of work experience they have what kind of leadership position you know they had hold you know like they had had in past uh, what complementary skill sets you know they bring on table right uh, how flexible they are what's you know their you know uh, human uh, you know uh, hand handling you know uh, traits you know uh, can they build team or not are they you know good salesmen or not whether they understand their business or not uh, whether you know uh, they are able to attract you know talent which you know they don't have right so there are several thing you know which we look at uh, you know just sounded few of them which you know becomes quite important for us uh you know i'm sure you know my 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 fellow you know panelists will have more to add but these are few of the aspect which we look at what makes important right whether is this the person you know who will be able to build that next unicorn for us or not right right that's, that's what we you know normally look at yep yep okay. so for the founders who are watching us today confidence um as one of the descriptions that Anil mentioned, just replay what he said. It's very uh, important because like I said, again, daily basis, we receive um, uh, communication from startups and, and we do mention that, but it's really good that they hear from proper investors who know what they're doing. So thank you so much, Anil. Um, very quickly, Gary. So we, we say that um, in, in the early stage, the first uh, investment uh, or the seed investment happens um, commonly from family and the fools sometimes. So what do you recommend? Do you recommend go straight forward? If I am a startup who is like pitching for the very first time, should I pitch to um, sharks, <laughs> to, to you guys investors, or should I run my first uh, seed investment with my family and friends? What do you recommend? Well, I recommend that they they go out and they try to get, you know, uh, first some first revenue. People are really interested with their MVP because if you do that, it doesn't matter uh, who it is, they're going to be much more likely to invest in the company. And the situation is I've raised money. I raised $7 million without sales in a company with Eva.ai. So I had no sales in the company. So we went out. A lot of it's based on the team and the history of the team. Actually, raised nine and a half million dollars in total in that particular situation. So I did uh, two labeled. The first one and two were seven million was labeled as a seed round. So uh, I would go everywhere I could pitch because you want to get the feedback to refine your pitch to make sure you're right on target. The more practice, you know, practice makes perfect. The more practice, the more feedback, the better it is. I would go out to every one of those pitch competitions that are out there. Uh, now, and during the COVID time, I would get online and go to every one of them that I could get and get feedback. So that's it. First revenue is critically important. Mm -hmm. Then you're assured the people who, as Bob Dorf said, want to grab it out of your hands. So that's what I'd be looking for. And, and uh, thank so you so much. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. Very wise. Very wise. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, Raghu, very quickly, so um, Gary is mentioning that um, perfecting in the pitch and doing once, twice. So uh, Raghu, based on your experience or advice, what is the number in terms of like how many, how many times the startup has to pitch in order to potentially have an investment in your experience? Uh, I think it depends on uh, the team and the, uh, the idea as well, uh, how mature it is, the, both the team as well as the idea. So uh, and if they know the ropes, uh, we call it uh, unconscious incompetence. If you don't know what you don't know, then it takes a long time to learn that from others. And uh, you have to be open to learning because some people, if you don't even know what you don't know, it's very, it takes a very long road. But uh, if people are aware as well as the idea is good, especially it has already traction with the some customers like charter customers and things like that, then 
it could happen in you know one or two otherwise typically i think it's about 10 pitches or so where you get some refinement and then move forward that is that is very wise as well so it sounds to me that it's not only about that passion of uh, building a solution and also the start uh, the founder itself but also the team and uh, how the confidence on how to develop the uh, during the pitch and presentation. Very wise, thank you, uh, thank you so much, Raghu. So, um, Kweku, in terms of um, uh, the going from small to big, early stage um, startups, should they look for international investors or they, um, it, when they are in the stage of uh, looking for investors, sh should they go uh, regional in their country and then eventually internationally or is it fine to just jump to international investors like like I'm saying like we're having right now a panel of uh, uh, investors geographically located in different places so what do you advise I think that the cop out answer is, is a, a, bit, a bit of both, right? Uh, so um, smart money regionally. Uh, so looking for family offices, uh, individuals within sort of, or within the space that you're looking at locally, who can give you some capital goes a long way, right? Uh, just because they can assist you with moving the company, uh, 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 moving your objectives, at least uh, locally uh, as well, right? So whether if, if you are looking at a FinTech in, in Nigeria, having an investor uh, that works at a bank or works with uh, banks is would, would obviously be quite useful. But of course, uh, international money is international money as well. And obviously the quantums ab abroad are a bit higher, especially in the African context as well. And so looking to raise capital. Capital is, I, in my mind, always king. And you can always do a lot, a lot with that as well in terms of you know, moving your, your objectives as well. And so I would say a bit of both uh, would, would make the most sense uh, optimally. Uh, but if you are starting and looking to maybe showcase what you're looking to do, then perhaps, you know, look, the local sort of smart capital might be sort of, if you had to choose the, the way to go, but uh, uh, yeah. All right, thank you so much, very wise. Uh, Devon, is there a easy way to find investment or, is it always going to be hard? Uh, it depends on how well networked you are, frankly. You know, it's uh, how you leverage and build your network is, uh, you know, there's a saying that uh, network is net worth. <laughs> so, yep. you know, basically, you know, your immediate network, uh, you take an extreme, you know, there's uh, people that graduate from Stanford, you know, spend their whole lives in Silicon Valley. By the time they're 25, they you know they, they know so many VCs you know just just through local networking and all that. It's obviously much easier for someone like that to at least get meetings, if not raise a fund, uh, as opposed to other people that you know grew up in geographies that are not that where the ecosystems are less developed. You know, then you have to obviously work harder. You have to reach out. You know, thanks to LinkedIn, the world is a bit a bit smaller, a bit flatter. Uh, you know investors are more within reach, at least, you know, geography is less of a factor now. But I think, uh, you know, it, so it, it's a function of all this, right? Of course, it's a function of, uh, you know, I think what's really important for a startup is early PR. You know, if you build out a great team, if you manage to get on some luminary as an advisor, you get some key customer or early interest from a strategic, and somehow that uh, is, uh, articulated through the right PR, you know, the, the buzz starts building that this is the next big thing. Then the investors will come to you. You don't necessarily have to reach out. So it all depends on how you play these equations, you know, and play them to your favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very wise. Thank you so much, Devan. Uh, Harsh, this question goes to you in terms of like, I, I keep hearing from all of you um, investors that uh, it's about the team. So what is the smallest acceptable team to that from your perspective of investor that you look into five people 10 people in a team 15 people what is the smallest acceptable for you uh so carol uh, more than number i we look i mean at least i look at the functions right so uh, a single founder team is kind of a red flag because uh, you know you need to have more horses to bank on 
so multi at least more than two founders or even two founders is fine uh, second uh, i usually am not very comfortable if they outsource their tech if you are a tech company a tech startup you can't really outsource your tech i'm not really comfortable there there are some investors who have done this in the past where the idea is theirs and the tech is run by some guy so at least the tech if you are a tech startup your tech has to be a there should be a tech team at least the founder if if he is not uh, from a tech background he needs to have a cto in place at least that's what my requirement is marketing sales branding i think that can be taken care of but your day to day operations to reach from 1 to 5 customers or 5 to 10 customers you need tech right because Uh, you know, I've run my own startup, I, and I know how difficult it was for me to uh, run it with because I don't come from a tech background. Every uh, feedback which comes from customers, you need to be very, very quick to turn this around. And with a good tech team, you you can do that, right? So that's my uh, you know the first thing which I look for. So more than the number, I think the function is very, very important. Um, you know, if you're doing something core, uh, your your core needs to be with you. It can't be outsourced. That's what I look at. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Harsh. Uh, Srikant, in terms of uh, pitch and presentation itself, what are the higher um, or the much more acceptable um, in a per- pitch and presentation? What are what are those key that um, invest or excuse me, uh, founders and uh, CEOs have to keep in mind at the moment of preparing and rehearsing for their big day, their pitching day? I I am a fundamental believer in uh, honesty and uh, fair play. Uh, the moment something appears a little dishonest about uh, a particular pitch, uh, a, a lot of time uh, founders have this tendency of sugarcoating their pitch in such a way that it appeals to investors and uh, uh, they try to inflate their team sizes. I'm sure Harsh and Anil would have faced uh, this particular issue in India at least. uh where they try to show certain uh, team sizes or it would have been a one one person team and, and i agree with harsh in this particular factor right uh it would be a one person team they would showcase as if they are a they are a 10 member team and so on and so forth uh this happens quite quite normally in uh, in 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 developing countries uh, around the world so i i believe uh, be honest be truthful about what you're pitching uh if you haven't if you as a company haven't built something be honest about it and say that i need money to actually build this but uh, i think i think uh, what what we bank on is on the two minute that we that that we present to us is uh, the honesty is the financial that we present and the uh, not not about the fancy stuff like uh, the pitch deck to be to be very fancy and so on and so forth a lot of people apart from outsourcing tech uh, i'm sorry I'm, i'm exceeding my time limit over here apart from outsourcing the tech harsh uh, a lot of people also outsource their pitch preparation process which is one of the most uh, uh, cruelest thing that can happen in the pitching world wow interesting thank you so much um and last we have francis What are the well uh, Sri Kanth already mentioned a little bit the no goes in terms of like when pitching uh, to during the big day pitching to investors what are the no goes during the presentation that um based on your experience you will recommend startups to stop doing it uh the no competition slide that's uh, it's number one. that's the funniest one i always see i have no competition uh <clears throat> and then um perhaps listing too many advisors um so that's also one uh, i always see that a lot especially for some that it's almost like two pages long of small pictures uh, and then uh, there's also the part where they start to uh, claim about insights and and uh, other insider stuff uh, domain insights that they don't have so i think those are things that uh, i look out for very well said thank you so much and i feel like um some of the other fellow panelists they are nodding their head supporting what you just said so it makes a lot of sense so thank you so much for that those insights and talking about pitching talking about advising talking about projects today we have a very interesting uh, project and uh, they are about to start so i would like to um, welcome ivan ivan is uh, um, I-, i hope i'm pronouncing your name right or ivan uh, it's connecting i believe from russia to to present their their slides hi welcome 
Welcome to uh, La Token of ECTV. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to join you today. I'm going to present to you uh, present to your online platform for business management, ABD.com. Um, uh, today, entrepreneurs have a request for systematically development of their business based uh, on data. Um, our solution consists of two parts. Uh, it's the aggregator uh, of analytical metrics uh, synchronized without our RPA system. Uh, four steps on the business development for your client. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, Ivan, would you like to present uh, some slides? Oh, there you go. Perfect. Please repeat. Wonderful. Yeah. Yep. Now we can see it. I was about to ask you, just didn't mean to interrupt you. Thank you so much. Uh, if you need help um, for the rest of the, our panelists, I understand that Ivan is uh, with his teammate who probably will help us um, uh, also in the communication in the case we need it. So just letting you know that. So Ivan, please go ahead. Thank you. Um... Uh, one, one minute. Uh, repeat. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Happy to join you today. Uh, I'm going to present uh, to your online platform business for business management, abd.com. Um, today, entrepreneurs have a request for systematically development of their business based on data. Um, our solution consists of two parts uh, in the aggregator of analytical metrics uh, synchronized result of RPA system. Uh, so four steps, uh, business development for our client. Uh, step one, client analysis his business using our system and our advice, uh, a personal instruction for business development. ABD.com certified freelancer will help uh, entrepreneur to solve the task uh, she has difficult with. Um, the manager can add and control business metrics and automated scripts in on a centralized place. Um, sorry. Um, Automation uh, scripts run on a uh, separate offline or online machine on OS Windows, create robots without code user self. And a few minutes in gray, uh, a few, um, sorry, a 5,000 routine automation. Uh, please pay attention. We are not CRM, BI, ERP, etc. Uh, we are a meta platform aggregator uh, of analytics metrics, no need in integrators. Uh, we don't have direct competitions, but have uh, uh, industry ones. It's important to mention that we offer a complex uh, solution. Uh, we are dealing with clients problem faster, cheaper, uh, more systematically and uh, SUS efficiently. We have a service revenue stream, small checks from commission and subscription, budget checks from major chains and uh, franchise for generate huge sales for them. Uh, as in addition, uh, big checks also some from partnerships with uh, business service. Uh, economic. Um, the revenue uh, in the thousand quarter of 2020 is $11,000 from selling MVP concierge. Average and, uh, uh, increase of 50%. Uh, the blue trend line is our. Uh, we are uh, in training the massively growing uh, BI and RPA system markets. Potential growth by 2025 will allow us to show bigger results. 
We are the winners of so wide several uh, major competitions in Russia. We have won the BGF Russia um, hackathon that is a uh, genius book on of uh, records. We become uh, best from 63,000 applica uh, applicants. Um, we have uh, implemented our solution in the process of providing service to business clients. Uh, previously, uh, we provide a T consulting uh, and professional service. Uh, we have become the best uh, implanted uh, platform, the system automated. Uh, we are looking for the $500,000 for USA, go to market and passing the YC acceleration program uh, in 2021. Uh, we have a professional team uh, of development and sales manager. Uh, we create background. Uh, so um, here, why, uh, here are my contacts. Please feel free to ask uh, any questions. Uh, how my colleague, colleague uh, Dmitry will answer your questions. Thank you for listening to you. Yeah, hi, well done, everyone. Ivan. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to answer any question you have. I will help uh, Ivan to answer it. Dear panelists, do you have any question or comment that you would like to share? Feel free to do it. Yeah, I just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask what, what led to the idea? What's the background that led to this uh, um, um, solution? What was the problem you saw? What, what, what was the solution you, you sort of you envisioned uh, uh, as well uh, 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 that led to this? Okay, I can explain it. Um, Ivan was the owner uh, of uh, his own business in consulting and marketing. He consulted a lot of uh, Russian companies and not on the Russians. And um, some of his clients asked to help them in automatization of process. So um, working with it, he uh, decided to make this solution based on RPA and uh, that analysis, so yeah, that's how it uh, works. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, anybody else has some question or comment to share? So what kind of traction you have currently? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I said, what kind of uh, traction you have currently? Hmm, uh, let me ask you one. Uh, I mean to say what kind of sales you have currently, right? Are you doing any sales or it's still at the development stage? Yeah, right now we just uh, started doing sales and uh, we already have uh, sales managers and uh, first sales uh, and first clients already. Uh, we, um, we made uh, first check uh, in the last year, year already. Good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, where, anybody Dimitri, else? Dimitri, where are you located? Uh, our team located in different cities, mostly in Moscow. Also, I'm located in St. Petersburg, Russia. Yeah, uh, but mostly in Russia. Also, we have some developers. Three miles at the Yajiltam Pachti Ashitiri Goda. At the, I'm, Bill, I'm David Yang's partner. Do you know Abby? In Russia, Abby, A B B Y Y. Yes, I'm his partner. Wow, I so also he, impressed by your Russian. <laughs> well, Kadyshna, yeah, uh, I studied at Moscow State University for five years. Wow. Anyhow, uh, my partner is in Russia in Moscow right now. So if you want to talk in detail, I started Skolkova Startup Academy and GVA. We're happy to talk to you in some more detail, you know, yeah. there's other okay. questions that we can ask. Yeah, of course, it's a nice contact for us. So we will glad to contact them to uh, answer some questions and discuss it. 
Ага. Окей, приятно познакомиться. Очень приятно. Fantastic. I guess we are all learning in Russian at this point, Gary. We we need some lessons there. Thank you so much and thank you for that um, opportunity. It's really good to see it live on TV. Anybody else has some questions before um, we go to the end of our show? Anybody else would like to share something else? Uh, yeah, I would like to know what what kind of data you have because the businesses, uh, you know, have very different uh, models. So the AI, what is the data sets that you're using so that would uh, fit like a new um, business? How do you customize it? Okay, it's, um, as one mentioned, it's not a platform, it's meta platform. We not uh, generating our own data, data. we're just collecting data uh, for users, uh, also not collecting present users' data they have in other services. For example, if you're using uh, Slack or something or service for roadmap or any any else service, you can see all the maps, uh, graphics and everything in our platform. It's um, a way to easier present your data to you as a, as a user. So, so the, uh, you are expecting the company to have certain level of maturity so they have enough data uh, so that it can learn from that? Yeah, of course. So what would be the typical size of the company that uh, your customers? Um, first of all, we decided to, to um, our first aim is small and medium businesses because big companies is uh, too large and uh, we want to try uh, to work with small businesses first to uh, find some weak places in our project if we have some, and then we will go to big companies, of course. Thank you, thank you, Dimitri. Wonderful. Uh, anybody else would like to share comments, even advices, everything is welcome. No? It, it sounds to me that it's uh, no more comments, no more questions. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing your contact. So what we can do from now is uh, connect through email and share contact. So um, even go in conversations afterwards if uh, someone else pops up with some questions. So thank you very much and good luck for Ivan and Dimitri. Congratulations on your winnings. And uh, thank you so much for being here today on, on Latok and VCTV. You're welcome to come any other time as well. All right, so for the end of our show, I have a little game for um, our investors and panelists today. This is gonna take us five minutes. We're gonna go very quickly. So how the game is going to be is, I'm gonna um, give you a word or a phrase related to what we've discussed throughout the last uh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And uh, I would like you to, um, to answer with one word. What does uh, describe what you hear with one word? All right, let's do it very quickly. I'm gonna just repeat again. So I'm gonna give you a word or phrase and I want you to describe it using one single word. All right, it's gonna be about the topic that we um, discussed today throughout this time. All right, so let's start with Devan. Devan, describe startup. Passion. Uh-huh, passion. Raghu, startup. Uh, business model. Oh, sorry, yeah. two words. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the Whoops. <laughs> Harsh, startup. Persistent. Yeah, very good word. Francis. Startup. Hustle. Hustle. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Kweku. Adapt. That. I agree with you, like Charles Darwin. It's all about adapting to the changes to survive. Um, Anil, startup. Of course, unicorn. Unicorn, I love it, thank you. Money, money, money. <laughs> um, Srikamp, startup. Honesty. Say that again. Honesty. Yeah, quality, that's right. Um, Gary, startup. GSD, get shit done. Okay, that 
Th that makes a lot of sense, although it's three words, but fine, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Devan, fundraising. Fundraising. Passion. Oh, sorry, uh, persistence. Persistence. Raghu, fundraising. Uh, pitch deck, pitch. Pitch. Harsh, fundraising. Uh, craziness. <laughs> yeah. Francis, fundraising. Uh, dollars. I love it. <laughs> uh, Kweku, fundraising. Perseverance. Mm -hmm. Anil? VCs. Yep. Uh, Srinkan? Uh, it would be two words, but uh, something that I do day in and day out, term sheets. Okay. <laughs> All right, Gary. I'm sorry. Uh, what was the question? Fundraising. Describe it in one word. Um, grueling. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, that's right. And the last one, and and of course our favorite word, VCTV. Devan. Amazing. Raghu. Global. Harsh? Uh, refreshing. Francis? Uh, tokens. Yep. Kweku? Fantastic. Thank you. Anil? VCT. Fun. Say that Fun. again. Fun. Yep. Nice. Uh, Srikan? Perspective. Yeah. Gary? enchanting awesome beautiful thank you so much for all of you to join us today thank you for ivan as well one more time congratulations on your pitching good luck and on, on your next step and for the audience who are watching us today thank you for tuning in don't leave us yet because the next event is up to come in less than 30 minutes we really want to see you there i hope you picked really good advices really good opportunities in here and this is bctv by la token my name is Carol Zurita. I am the Lat Token VCTV manager. Very happy to hear your comments, your questions. We're here to help you.